Child Free Lifestyle Sacrificed. Hey everyone, welcome back to Lives on Reddit. Don't forget to subscribe to be a for lifer. I'm a 35 year old female who was living a single child free life up until two months ago. At 30, I had just gotten back from three months of traveling in Europe when I decided to have a child free existence and just go on adventures for the rest of my life. Now, however, I have custody of my nephew because my irresponsible sister had him taken away. I will soon be adopting him forever because her parental rights will soon be severed permanently. I love my nephew and will be providing for him with a loving home and making all the sacrifices his mother should have made because he's worth it. I'm upset, however, because everyone has an opinion on it. He's a blessing. You're finally a mother. You should feel privileged. I get it, but I can't help feel that I'm sacrificing a big chunk of my happiness for this. I won't turn back or regret providing him with a safe and stable home, but I wish people, especially family, would stop telling me how to feel about it. I'm so sorry people are not giving you the room you need to grieve the loss of the life you wanted. It is a huge life change and people should be respectful of that. Them trying to impose that BS silver linings crap is unhelpful and disrespectful. It is hard to step in for a lousy parent and it is a thankless position to be in. Good luck with everything. Thanks, and you're right, it does feel like grieving in a way. Grieving is a natural feeling that you should expect to feel in this situation. You need to mourn who you are and the life you led and wanted to lead. It is going to be awful for a while and I can't tell you that at some undefined point in the future, you will get over it. You may come to accept that this thing happened to you, but that doesn't mean that you accept it or are okay with it. And that is okay for you to feel that way. It's okay to feel betrayed. This is an incredibly complex situation that no one can foresee or prepare for. You simply have to live with the hand you've been dealt. Source, I lost my everything after a traumatic brain injury 10 years ago. I'm still grieving over all that I lost that was out of my control. And yes, I'm still angry and no, I will never be okay. I've been worried about this exact situation happening to me. My sister is kind of a screw up and honestly that's putting it nicely. My grandmother is currently taking care of him and she's in her 80s. I know my father doesn't want to take him on and he feels really guilty for it. I just don't want my nephew growing up in a home where he's resented. My wife and I talk about it every time there is a new event. We've decided for the time being we will send care packages to make sure he has books, toys, and school clothes while my dad helps out with food expenses. We've decided that if my grand passes while he is still in her care, that we will revisit the discussion of taking him. I can imagine losing the lifestyle you choose is exactly like grieving and also understand the obligation of it. I just want you to know that it is a wonderful thing that you are doing for him and you are absolutely valid in having a grieving period. I know it might not be coming from a stranger, but thank you for the sacrifice you are making for his well-being, and I truly wish you the best. It's bright-siding or positive thinking. While sometimes it helps, there are times when it doesn't and people need to realize that and shut the frick up. The biggest problem with positive thinking is that people think that the good erases the bad, and not only is that not a thing, but pretending that it does is very invalidating because it dismisses what the person is feeling. Case in point, the original poster is not ranting about the nephew, they're ranting about what people think they should feel. Yep, speaking from my own experience of being adopted, your comment, people think the good erases the bad, etc is so spot on. I had an ideal childhood, adopted or not, but I was never, ever given the space to grieve the very real loss and trauma of being separated from my bio family because I was so lucky and such a blessing to my family who wanted kids. It is so important to give people the space to grieve. I'm over 30 now and finally feel like I have been able to grieve about it in a healthy way. It really freaked up my thinking about a lot of things for a long time and has been a lot to untangle. If I had just been able to have my feelings of loss and sadness validated when I was a child, 
I know I would have had less of a rough go in my teens or early 20s. I think they don't know what else to say. Only another child-free person would understand what to say in this situation. Which is, that freaking sucks. Good for you for stepping up and doing what has to be done. Let me know when you need me to watch him for a couple weeks so you can continue to travel since I know how hard it is to be giving that up. Thanks. Oh, well, I was able to negotiate with my parents, his grandparents, one week a year for a child-free vacation. Not what I used to do, but one big place a year isn't too bad. I also took in my sibling's kid in the last few months for similar reasons, putting my child freeness away. I love my sibling's kid, but I feel like they deserve a place where they feel safe. But man, did I ever want to tell my friend who knows I got sterilized to frick right off when they said they were happy I had a kid now so they could relate to me better even though they know it's not what I wanted. If you need to talk, I may be slow to reply sometimes, but feel free to personal message me. Anything you say will be met with the understanding you want what's best for the kid and where your emotions might be with the situation. Also, therapy is really helpful. Take care of yourself. I remember when we were both young, my brother asked if I would be a guardian for his two children if he and his wife died. I said no. He was shocked, but just no. Fortunately, nothing ever happened. I was watching The Staircase on Netflix and there's a part where this couple dies and leaves Michael Peterson, their two daughters, to raise in their will. I had to pause and try to wrap my head around that, like, you can leave people to someone? Pretty sure they don't have to take them if they don't want them, but it's crappy to use pressure or guilt from your death to impose them on someone. Just what the frick? Can I ask, if you wanted to be child free, why did you agree to have custody of him? My parents are too old and my older brother won't take him. My sister was adopted so we know how bad it is in the foster system. I couldn't do it to him. I do love him, so it was me. You're a better person than me. I don't think I could do it. Maybe some counseling would be good for you. You don't want him to grow up knowing you resent the situation. I may hate kids, but it's not their fault. Kids aren't stupid, and this could really freak him up. Sorry your sister is such a useless mommy special friend. But that's a false choice. The foster system is not the only other option. You can arrange your private adoption to meet parents that you personally select and even make it an open adoption so he has an aunt and grandparents. You don't have to actually be the custodial parent for him to have a great life. In fact, having two full-time willing parents plus still having you as an aunt would give him even more good people and a more stable environment. Not sure where this whole only me or foster system myth comes from, but it's not really true. I can't help but feel it's underplaying and egregiously insulting how people are saying things like, You're finally a mother! He has a mother already! She made the choice to have him. She, for whatever reason, has elected to utterly fail her responsibilities as one. What you are and what you are doing by adopting your nephew completely transcends what is typically motherhood. What you are doing is orders of magnitude more altruistic than simply birthing a child, an action which frankly occurs as easily with any pet that isn't spayed or neutered. You are taking the responsibility of caring for a human that has been failed and, if I could infer, likely experienced trauma. That is a very big deal. I empathize greatly with the fact that you have to change your entire life to provide for your nephew now, but for what it's worth, it sounds like with you, he will grow up into a better person than if he stayed with his mom. It's not a privilege, it's a sacrifice. You are giving up the life you worked for and wanted and taking responsibility for another human being because he's family. You should be commended for doing this. I have nephews and nieces from my siblings and my nightmare scenario is something happens to one of my siblings. I'm adamant about not being named legal guardian to any of my nephews or nieces, but if push comes to shove, I'd take them in. Not because they're kids, but because they're my family. P.S. 
Though, have you asked any of your relatives who are calling this tragedy privilege if they'd be willing to adopt the privilege instead? I'd try just to see the excuses start flying. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't leave. Subscribe. Be a for lifer.